Okay, so before I start the second series of videos to help you train to be a better teacher, I wanted to start with some morale building advice from Ernest Holmes and his book called Creative Mind and Success. And he has a quote, some quotes in here. First of all, you've probably already tried teaching and you've probably made mistakes and that's okay. The first point he gives is forgive the past, all right? So he says, the person who is to succeed will never let his mind dwell on past mistakes. He will forgive the past in his life and in the lives of other people. If he makes a mistake, he will at once forgive it. So, forgive yourself for all the mistakes you made when you taught. After all, you just started teaching, so what do you expect? Are you going to be perfect the first time? I doubt it, so don't worry. I had um, one of my volunteer teachers, she taught the whole wrong lesson the first day, and that's okay. I mean, it's kind of um, funny, but it's completely fine. She just taught the wrong page of the book. Now it's okay. It was her first day. I forgive her and I think she's forgiven herself so that's good too. So just forgive yourself. If it was your first day teaching, you taught the wrong book, you taught the wrong thing, you forgot all your students names, you tripped, you fell, you broke your arm. I don't know. It's okay. It was the first day. The first day is usually really stressful so if you're ever gonna break your arm in a class it would be the first day. <laughs> anyway, so forgive yourself. The second um, point that is made here is don't think about all these mistakes you made, right? Get over it. Now that you know what you did wrong, that's okay. Next time you'll do less wrong or you'll do more right, okay? Now, it might be helpful for you to keep a list of all the good things that you did. All right, so what did you do right? Did you keep your voice loud enough so that all the students could hear what you were saying? Did you make it a point to write all the students' names on the board or have name tags or something so that you could actually say the students' names? Did you prepare the lesson? Did you finish the lesson? Did you have the students speak up in class and practice? Uh, there's so many things that you probably did that were great. Okay, did you show up to class on time? That's really great. <laughs> so just keep a list of all the good things that you did and cheer yourself on every day. All right, because you're doing a great job. So that's another piece of advice. I used to do that in college. I used to keep a list of every time I did something great or I did something really good. And when I was feeling down, I would go back and read my list and then I would feel good again because I knew that, wow, I did so many awesome things and I totally forgot. And I was focusing all these negative things, but actually I'm a really cool person, I'm very capable and I can do a lot. So that's what you can do if you tend to be less confident. It's a good idea to write a list of the good things that you did. And it doesn't have to be teaching either, but if you want to focus on teaching, then write the good things that you did in the classroom. Okay, the second thing it says is radiate joy, faith, hope, and expectancy. Okay, the conditions that we attract will correspond exactly to our mental picture. It is quite necessary then that the successful businessman or parent, artist, teacher, whatever, should keep his mind on thoughts of happiness which produce cheerfulness instead of depression. He should radiate joy and should be filled with faith, hope, and expectancy. These cheerful, hopeful attitudes of mind are indispensable to the one who really wants to do things in life. Okay, so when you're in the classroom, are you radiating joy and hope and expectancy? Do you look at your students and do you see fluent English speakers of the future? <laughs> okay. Do you see them memorizing the dialogue that you're putting on the board and saying it in perfect English? Do you visualize that? Do you see it in front of you? Do you have hope? Do you feel happy that you're teaching? Do you feel grateful that you're there, that you have this role, that you can help these students become better speakers, that you can help guide them so that they can work on being better English speakers, better English writers, better English... Um, readers, listeners, are you radiating joy, faith, hope, and expectancy? So this is another uh, technique to try that I do. I do gratitude log, um, which is a link on ESL Teacher. 
it's a place where every day I write down what I'm thankful for and that helps me keep a positive attitude about everything in my life um, and if you want to focus on teaching you can always write down before and after class what were you grateful for? Were you grateful that a student finally said a word correctly? Were you grateful that the students came to class that day? <laughs> I used to teach in a school where if the students don't come, you don't have class, you don't get paid. So I was very grateful when students came to class. So um, are you grateful that you're, you're teaching and they understand? Are you grateful that you have a job teaching and that you get paid? Or are you grateful that you spend your time doing something so worthwhile it makes you feel so good inside. So that's what I do. I use gratitude log. You can use whatever you um, like if you have other uh, methods. But I know gratitude log helped me a lot. Um, some people write in a journal. They write down what they're grateful for, what makes them happy. So I highly recommend it. It's uh, very good. The happy you, happier you are, the happier your students will be because they'll feel your happiness and it'll make the class better. Finally, the last point I wanted to share from him was negative thoughts be gone. So put every negative thought out of your mind once and for all. Alright? And so if you ever have a negative thought, just let it just don't let it finish. Okay? So if you start thinking to yourself, oh, I made a mistake. I, why did I do that? Then just stop. You know, as soon as you catch yourself, stop and just change it to, oh, I'm doing the best I can and I just caught something that I can improve on. This is so great. Okay? So make sure that in your head is very important what you're thinking. Make sure you stay positive. Okay? Now everybody has negative thoughts, but the key here is to try to change your negative thoughts to make them more positive. Try to have more positive thoughts than negative thoughts. At least that's the first step. And this is challenging for me too. Actually, I practice this every day. Very hard. <laughs> so I used to have many, many negative thoughts. So I know how that can be. And it is very disruptive for life in general, especially I used to be teaching and it would get me down too. So in general, when you have negative thoughts, turn them into positive thoughts. Turn them around. Instead of thinking about how your student is late and why they're always late and da da da, just think, oh, I'm so glad my student made it to class today again. I'm so glad my student is here. All right? Um, I'm so glad the student is still coming to class and still trying to learn English and hasn't given up and is keeping, you know, here, is determined to learn. Um, I know one trick that I use if I'm thinking a lot of negative thoughts and I'm in a rut, I just try to think of something that always makes me happy. So I know that there's this little girl I live with, she's really cute, she's four. All I have to do is really just stop and think about how cute she is and all the cute things she does and if she's actually here at home I can go talk to her and that cheers me up right away. It's really important that you stay happy. This will keep you healthy and it'll keep you, uh, focused and it'll make you a better teacher, it'll make you a better person in general. So these are the um, tips I wanted to share. This is from Ernest Holmes' book. Again, this is from Creative Mind and Success. And I wanted to thank you for learning to be an ESL teacher. These points, I actually focus on them a lot. This is my current training. <laughs> is. Um, my attitude in class, my attitude everywhere in my life. So start early and you'll be way ahead of me later on in life and maybe you'll have it all by habit and you'll be the most awesome English teacher in the world. I hope that you will be. Alright, well delve into the videos this week and good luck. Thank you very much for teaching.